Your YouTube channel banner is one of the first things that catches viewers' eyes when they come to your channel. So you want to make sure it conveys what you want them to know and also has the right sizing to fit across all devices. This is Grace from Kapwing and in this episode of our YouTube channel art series, I'll show you how to make a perfectly sized YouTube banner using a free online template and also give you ideas and tips along the way. Make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the videos in this series as we go through and make channel art together. And now let's get into the video. To start making your YouTube header, just click the first link in the description below and you'll be taken to our template where it's perfectly sized already for all devices. So just hit make it and you'll be taken into this editor. And just to orient you a little bit, so the whole canvas will be the size that shows up if you're viewing your YouTube channel on a TV. This dark rectangle is the text and logo safe area. So this small, this dark rectangle will show up across all devices, even mobile phones, tablets, computers, and TVs. And then this larger rectangle, this long banner, that is what shows up on desktop. So when you see a YouTube header on your computer, this it's this length and then this width. So the trick with this is that you want something that will work for the whole screen. You want to fill this whole canvas with something, but only this part should have the stuff that you want to show up in all the different devices. Now in terms of actually designing the header, there are many ways you can go with this. Some ideas for headers are using your channel name or your personal name, writing out your slogan or the topics you cover on your channel, maybe a posting schedule when viewers can expect to see videos from you, and examples of your work or pictures of you depending on the type of channel and what kind of content you're making. And ultimately you want to use this space to convey what you want viewers to know immediately after seeing your channel. I'm gonna make a header now just to show the possibilities and show the different tools in this, uh, in this editor that you can use. The first step I'm gonna do to maintain brand consistency is bring in my color palette that I made in episode one of the series with my brand colors. So I have it in my Kapwing projects. I'm gonna click upload and then search projects. And here it is. I'm gonna just resize this down so I can use it, but it's not blocking my view. The next thing I would recommend for whatever you're going to be making your banner about is having something like that an image or a color that fills the whole canvas so that even if you have like your banner off view on desktop, when someone looks at it on a TV, it still looks good. You can search for images here or upload one. I'm going to just make it a certain color in this example. And the way I'm gonna do that is uh, click the background, this canvas in the back, and then you can choose a color here or use the eyedropper tool. And I'm gonna go over to my palette over here and choose this tan color. So now this whole canvas is that color. Now to actually make the subject of my header, I'm gonna add some text and I'm gonna write just my channel name. Now you wanna remember that with the desktop view, this is the max width. So you don't want to make it too large. You don't want it to make it like this big because then it will just fill up the whole width of the header. Now I'm also gonna make this uh, my brand colors. I'm gonna change the text color. I'm gonna use this dropper and roll over this blue color and click that. So now it's my brand colored blue. And then I'm also gonna change the font to a different one. If you have a custom fonts that you use and you wanna upload to the editor, you'll need a Kapwing Pro subscription to do that. If you go to more fonts, you can just click upload font here and then drag in your file. Now, another cool feature with text is that we have drop shadows. So if you click the text and go to effects on the side, you can click drop shadow and then you can either have it blurred or just make it no blur and it was it's a solid drop shadow. So I'm gonna use that and it just helps to make the text pop out of the background a little bit more and make it visible on different types of, of colors in the back. The next thing I'm gonna add is just some more visuals, some images to make it a little more interesting. A good place to look is just in the images tab here. You can search for whatever you want and a lot of people like to use different visual elements like paint stripes or like different squiggles and stuff. You can search for that here. I'm just gonna search tape strip 
And if you want it to be transparent in the back, you can try searching PNG at the end. Now, when the results come up, the ones that are actually PNGs will have no background at all, not even this checkered background. Um, but even if it does have some a background that you want to erase part of it, you can go into uh, our image eraser tool and erase it too. So I like this one, I'm gonna click that and it brings it in. So I'm gonna resize this down and I actually want it to be the length and height of my words. So I'm okay if it gets cut off a little bit because then it will be the right height for my words. So I'm going to lay it over here and then I'm going to zoom in uh, just so you can see this button. I'm going to click send backward so that it's behind the letters. There we go. And the last thing I'm going to do is add some illustrations. So you can obviously search again in the images tab, but there are lots of uh, websites online just to find stock icons or illustrations or images. Two sites that I like to use, one is Pexels, and I'll link them in the description below as well. This one just has stock photos and videos that are free to use, and they just have, you can search for whatever you want. I used uh, one of these images in a different example of a header that I'll show later on in this video. And then another website that is good for stock illustrations that are free to use is Undraw. And the nice thing about this is you can actually change the color of the illustrations to a color that you want. So in my, uh, in my header, I wanted to make the illustrations this blue color. To find out what hex code this color is, I can just see on the side here that the text color. So I'm gonna just type that into uh, undraw. And now you can see all the illustrations are that shade of blue. You can search for whatever terms you want and then just select one and save download PNG and it's totally free. I already downloaded the illustrations I want, so I'm just gonna click upload here and bring them into my project. So it's two illustrations and I'm gonna lock the ratio and resize them down so they're smaller. I'm not actually gonna have the full image inside this this rectangle, which is the displayed on all devices rectangle. I'm gonna actually just have it cut off when you're viewing it on mobile which is fine. If you don't wanna do that, then obviously stay within this dark rectangle for so that everything is viewed across the devices. But I'm actually fine with it being cut off a little bit. And I don't want that white border, so what I'm gonna do is use our image eraser. So I'm gonna click the photo and then click erase on the side here. And you have two options. The magic wand erases more efficiently, so especially if it's just a white border like this it's pretty easy to just click and drag and it selects most of the white and then you just hit delete on your keyboard and it'll delete that and then you can go in with your freehand erase which erases pixels that you move over and delete this white border so there it is i'm gonna do the same thing with this photo now Okay, sweet, so I have my illustrations here that I'm gonna just bring in as close as I can to the name. Now, I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to delete the rest of these borders and guidelines so that this is what my final header will look like. Once you're happy with how it looks, just click the export red button in the corner. My header is done loading. This is what it looks like, so to save it, to your device, just click download first, and then now we can go and upload it to our channel. So just go to youtube.com and then click your channel icon in the corner. Go to your channel, then click customize channel and just hit branding. And you can see that last time we made our logo and now we're uploading our header. Let's click upload. It gives you a little guideline to see what it looks like on different devices. So this whole thing is what you'll see on TV. This is what you'll see on desktop. And then this is what you'll see on every device, including tablets and mobile phones. I like how that looks. I, I don't mind that it gets cut off a little bit because I think it adds to the, just like the, the graphic design element of it. So I'm gonna click done. And then make sure that you also click publish so the changes are saved. You can always go in and change your header, change the graphics on this page. So don't worry if it's not looking the way you want, just go and do it again and then upload it. Awesome, so this is what my banner looks like on desktop, and I like how it looks. It's perfectly centered. You can see that the tape is in the middle, and then you still have these graphic icons that allude to kind of what my channel is about. These are some other banner options I came up with for my channel, and for the water one, I made it by adding an 
image of uh, some ocean water in the background and then adding my text with a drop shadow over it. For this one, I added in a photo of paint in the background and added my text, but also with my posting schedule on top with the drop shadows and that image I found from Pexels. And with this last one, I kept it really simple. I just have my slogan and then two little icons that I found from a free stock icon website. Thanks for watching this episode of our channel art series. If you liked the video and it was helpful, please give it a like and subscribe so you're staying up to date with all the rest of the videos in the series. Next, we're going to be making a YouTube watermark for your videos. If you have any feedback or questions, let us know in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.